Hello and welcome everyone to this video. My name is Christopher Grötsch, I am a Solutions Engineer at Keysight and today we are going to take a closer look at component roles in RF Pro. I will explain you how you can use them and when to choose which. So let's start with a simple example that you can see here in the ADS layout window. We have a PCB with a micro strip line that is connected to a SMD capacitor, which is then connected to this package here using a bond wire. Inside of the package there is sort of filter structure. The output of the package is then connected to another piece of micro strip line using another bond wire. The package uses a different technology than the PCB, so I've used smart mount to assemble everything. When we start RF Pro now, it will automatically assign different roles to other components. The assignment is based on the components' names. In this case, the SMD is a circuit component, the package is a layout component, and the bond wires are sub-design components. For each component role, there is a different symbol, so you can quickly see by a look in the design tree which role a component has. The easiest to explain and to understand is the circuit role. Actually, it boils down to every time you prefer to use a schematic model instead of EM simulating a structure, you want to use the circuit role. The classical example as shown here is the SMD component. Although more and more 3D models are provided for SMDs, it is still way more common that you only get a model in form of S parameters for them. And even if you had a 3D model of the SMD, simulating with S parameters is often quite accurate. Hence, you still might want to use those to speed up your simulation. But of course, if you have a 3D model of your SMD and you want to use it, this is no problem at all and you can easily do that in your RF Pro simulation. You will just have to use the layout component role instead of the circuit component role. But more on this later. To include a circuit component in your simulation, you have to drag and drop it in the component model section in your analysis. So what is happening behind the scenes during the simulation? For each component with a circuit role, RF Pro will create internal ports corresponding to the available pins of the component. So in this case we have two pins, P1 and P2, and you can see them highlighted in the layout. If we do a right click on our SMD component and go to Properties, we will open up the Component Model Editor with a Port Editor. And you can see the two pins of the component, P1 and P2. If you select them, they also get highlighted in the layout again. And also the reference pin that RF Pro will use to create the ports from these pins. In this case, it's the backside metallization of the PCB. Hence, for this simulation, we have two external ports, so the input and output of the PCB. Let's quickly add them to the analysis. And two internal ports. So the input and the output of the SMD component. This is also reflected by the simulation results. If we run the simulation and open the S-parameter results, you will see that this is a 4x4 matrix. So two ports represent the external ports and two the internal ones of the SMD. So for example, in this case, S41 is the transmission from the input of the microstrip, left side of the board, to the input of the SMD. Now if you create a test bench or a sub-circuit, the internal ports will be used to automatically connect the circuit model to these internal ports. This is more or less all you need to know for now about circuit component role. So let's have a closer look at layout and sub-circuit role. In principle, in either role components will be EM simulated. So what's the difference? If you change a component's role to sub-design, first thing that happens is that the hierarchy will be resolved. It is comparable to a flattening command. That means afterwards you will have access to all underlying components. But what happens to parts in layer that are polygons or traces? They will be automatically attached to a connected net or, if there is no connection to an existing net or pin, 
They will be collected under the unlabeled interconnects branch in the design tree. Now let's do it with the package. At the moment it is a layered component. If we do a right click and we say change component role to subdesign, it will, as explained, flatten the hierarchy. At first everything looks the same. However, in our component tree we can now suddenly access the filter component, which was not visible before and which was automatically assigned the subdesign role. The paths and the lines leading to the filter are automatically attached to the nets they are connected to. Hence there is only one net now for the line coming from the output of the SMD, including the wire bonds and the pads and the filter, and going all the way to the output transmission line on the other side of the package. Since I have now access to the filter, I could also change its component role. If I have a circuit model for it, I could, for example, use the circuit component role. Or I could also use the layout role. As you can see, the layout role we interrupt the former transmission line net and two new nets are created. One coming from the SMD output onto the package and the pad, and one leading from the package to the output port at the right side of the PCB. Now why would I use layout role when I could just flatten all except the circuit components? This gets more obvious when we don't want to simulate our entire design. For that, we must switch to user-defined EM analysis. Imagine we just want to examine the behavior of the trace from the output of the SMD to the input of the filter. With the filter set to layout row, we can simply select the net, bond wire 1, and drag and drop it to our user-defined analysis. If the filter was a sub-design, it would be the same net as the line I want to examine. There would be no way to select just a part of that net. Please note, in the user-defined analysis, we also have to add layout components to the simulation the same way we added the circuit components. So for example, we want to simulate the transmission from the output of the SMD to the output of the filter. So now we have not only to include the trace in our analysis, but also the filter. All we have to do for this is we have to drag and drop the filter to the parts section in the analysis and adjust the ports accordingly so that the output port is the output port of the filter. By the way, when you're using 3D components, for example, instead of the circuit component for the SMD, you will have to choose the layout role and also add it to the parts section of the simulation when you're using a user-defined EM analysis. If you're using a full EM analysis, you don't have to add it to the simulation and you're good to go. I hope with this short video it is now clearer what the difference between the component roles is and how you can leverage them in your design. If you're interested in a specific topic and wish it would be covered in another video, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching.